Hello, welcome to the second part of the terrain tutorial. In this part, we're going to polish up the logic a bit more uh, and actually add with a decent looking terrain. So if you followed along, you already had this setup. So we can type in a certain pattern or certain placement of how I model, how my model should behave over the terrain. And right now I want to polish up this bit more and define an actual terrain. For example, what I can already see here with my case is uh, the end part here needs to be actually rotated. So uh, I have a nice looking piece, but the end part uh, should be rotated or reversed. So what I can do is in my wrangle here, is I can double check if this is an ending of something. We might also want to rename this node to, for example, splitting patterns or something. Uh, so we know that what some of the logic uh, we have here. So in here, I will write a few more lines. So I just basically want to check when a model is coming to an end. Uh, and then based on that, I want to maybe rotate models. So we're going to say that if uh, x plus 1 equals uh, the count, then uh, we need to set uh, the point attribute again. So point attribute. And we want to, of course, set this again on our current geometry. Uh, we're going to give this the naming, for example, lost in line or maybe lost part. Um, and then we want to store this on the newly created points. So new point. And we want to set this to value 1. And we want to say setting method. So let's take a look here at our values. So we can now see that we are now returning value one uh, over here. Uh, we can also, for example, do an else here as well. If you want to be sure, uh, I can just copy paste this. So if it's not equal to one, uh, we can just make sure to set this to zero, for example. Um, so we'll not change much here. So that's a little logic there to get that last part. So in here, when we are actually then uh, placing the models, we want to then build a switch node. So switch node. And we also want to make room here for a transform node. So transform. And with this transform, all we will simply do is I'm going to grab my handle and rotate this then uh, 180 degrees. So whenever I feel that the last part is there, I'm just going to switch that to the other direction. We need to again get data from another node. So we need to get the data from this node. So I'm going to say get uh, spare inputs. I'm going to drag it in here. We're going to create another line. So after a while here, you can see that we are creating more lines. Um, so we're going to here then uh, search for the points and search on, of course, the spare input. We want to look at point zero, and we want to look uh, or get the value of the last part uh, to check if we are getting any values there, and index zero. So that should give us a, a good result. So you can see that currently this is one, uh, and when I look at my results, my model is now being reversed there. So by just building this one single switch node, I now have a small system to rotate those models if they are in the last in line. So this will make sure it looks good. Uh, then here, uh, when I go to my loop again, if I disable the single passing, uh, they are all again collapsed on into each other. Uh, so I remade three parts of the train, and they are and they are all now just collapsed into each other. So I don't want that necessarily. What can be useful to do here when we are doing loops is to create an attribute that stores the amount of loops. Um, so in this case, it will actually store, uh, for example, the, the wagon number. So we can just say wagon, and uh, this can be an integer. And we want to grab uh, this number of iterations here. So again, we want to create the spare inputs, getting data from this other node. So there will be this long line going over there. And now we want to again uh, grab the detail value. 
uh, from the spare input minus one, uh, which is called iteration. And we want to grab index zero, close this off, and then we should get, for example, value two here. Um, so now we have that in place. And now if I go to my attributes, uh, we should be able to see a wagon number. So it goes from zero, one, and two. So with that, I can, for example, do a loop on that. Uh, I can also try to figure out something here to uh, stack the models better. Again, there are multiple ways of approaching something here in Houdini. Now we want to do a loop. So we want to do a loop for each uh, point, for example. But in this case, uh, if we actually do for each point, uh, we will break here our logic. So we can see that we will delete the primitives. Um, so we will actually need to do for each uh, primitive uh, and actually named primitive. So if you loop on that, uh, we can loop based on a certain naming. Um, so in this case, we want to loop on our wagon number. Uh, but currently our wagon is stored in points. So we want to switch this over to primitives. So now uh, this, if you go to primitive, we now have this wagon uh, number here. So we want to use that information inside of this loop so we're going to use a loop now based on attributes, which is also very useful to know about. So we want to loop based on uh, the wagon uh, number. And now we're going to see that we are switching to three loops. So we can now just loop uh, individually over uh, these parts. So one, two. So we have that information. Then again, what I want to do here is actually similar as I did before. I want to copy this note delete the input part here, and we want to switch this over to feedback loop. So this will get the data from uh, the previous iteration. Now again, we want to place a transform here uh, because we want to offset uh, the model here on the X axis. So we're gonna grab here this value. So get spare input, we'll link those together. And we're gonna grab the bounding box then of the feedback loop. So get uh, the bounding box of minus one, and then we want to get to the uh, x max value. And now it should be properly placing some of the models as you can see. So we are now placing them nicely after each other. What I can also recommend doing here is actually building a color node. And it, you can place it, for example, here or somewhere else. And we want to actually preview uh, the colors attributes, so random from attribute, we want to preview the primitives, uh, and this is, I want to preview the wagon uh, iterations. So you can see that we want to, so you can see that we now have those three different uh, wagons that I made here. So in this case, actually, uh, this doesn't make any sense to place an ending over there. We actually need to place it here at the beginning. So we can now play around with this pattern um, like so. So I can quickly make this train looking like this. So we have the base structure of our system. Uh, I can add more. I can add variation. So we have these uh, trains now. Now quickly here summarizing some of the things that we did is we loaded in all of our models. In so this case, I have five of them. Uh, we gave them specific uh, values, so A, B, C, and D. Then I wanted to create a loop, and this loop would get the data of the multi-parameter that I used here. So we're going to grab those patterns. So once we have those patterns, I want to split uh, these patterns into different parts, and I want to convert the patterns then into here attributes, so I can easily read those uh, namings here and use them. So once we have all these namings, I want to create another loop that loops over each single uh, point. So I can loop over them and then copy that model on that point. And then here is what we have done. So we also make sure that we place them nicely together. And then once we had that, we also store the current uh, wagon number. So I know exactly uh, what part is which, uh, which can be useful to do other things as well like if you want to subtract other parts and so on. So after that, we had our uh, result, but they were all collapsed in one, uh, but they were all collapsed on the same position. 
So I can, for example, do another loop here uh, based on primitives with attributes and place them next to each other nicely. And that is what I currently then have. So that was it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it and thank you for watching.